What if you had been a juror in the Casey Anthony trial? How would you have cast your vote for her guilt or her innocence? This is a question that many have pondered in the years since the trial. But what if I told you there was vital information that the jurors were never told, including details that linked Casey to the crime scene where Kaylee was found? Information that was never presented to the jury at trial. Today, I want to revisit the timeline of events and the corresponding interviews that occurred throughout this case and leave it to you to decide where the truth lies. This is when lies become the truth. The Casey Anthony story, episode two. Our story begins on the morning of June 16th, 2008. This was the day that Kaylee Anthony was last seen alive. Cindy Anthony left the Anthony residence for work just before 7 a.m., leaving Casey, Kaylee, and George Anthony still sleeping inside their home. Almost an hour later, the Anthony family computer registered a login to Casey Anthony's password-protected MySpace account at 7.52 a.m., Searches for shot girl costumes were conducted, believed to be in connection with Casey's boyfriend, Tony Lazaro, and his nightclub events. Several hours later, at 1.39 p.m., the family computer again logs activity for Casey Anthony's accounts, including AOL Messenger, MySpace, and Facebook, all requiring a password login. A few minutes later, Casey would call her new roommate, Amy Huizinga, speaking to her for a total of 37 minutes. At 2.30 p.m., George Anthony leaves Casey and Kaylee to go to his workplace as a security guard. Cell records confirm his movements around this time and would verify that he was no longer in the area of his home shortly after 2.30 p.m. Casey and Kaylee are now the only people who remain in the Anthony house. What occurred over the next few minutes would never be heard by the jury. At 2.49 p.m., Casey's cell records indicate and confirm that she remained in the area of the Anthony residence due to verifiable cell tower pings. Shortly thereafter, the Anthony computer again registers a password-protected login for Casey Anthony's AOL Instant Messenger. Two minutes later, at 2.51 p.m., a Google search is conducted for foolproof suffocation. Just five seconds later, an article was clicked that included advice on foolproof ways to end your life. In the article, it would state, and I quote, poison yourself and then follow it up with suffocation by placing a plastic bag over the head, unquote. One minute later, the Anthony family computer would again register a password protected login to Casey Anthony's MySpace account. And these searches would go on to be deleted just one month later on July 16, 2008, just hours before Casey Anthony's arrest. These critical details would never be heard by the jury due to a catastrophic error on the part of the prosecution from a failure to check all available internet history. As a result of human error with no secondary verification, the jury would never hear the forensic data that inextricably linked those searches to their defendant. At 2.52 p.m., Casey received a call from her former fiancé, Jesse Grund, who would later testify that their conversation was abnormal. And at 3.04 p.m., George Anthony called Casey from his place of employment, but the call would only last 26 seconds. 30 minutes later, Casey would attempt to call her boyfriend, Tony Lazaro, but the call was unanswered. And at 4.10 p.m., Casey began a flurry of calls to her mother, Cindy, but all six would also go unanswered. And by 4.11 p.m., Casey had begun to head towards the house of her boyfriend, Tony Lazaro, who later confirmed Casey had arrived, appearing to be happy and in good spirits. And later that evening at 7.54 p.m., Casey and Tony were seen on surveillance footage at Blockbuster Video. Kaylee Anthony was not with her. And after that day, she would never be seen alive again. In the days and weeks following June 16th, Casey Anthony would be seen on surveillance footage multiple times at Target, JCPenney, just to name a few, but each time without Kaylee. 
including competing in a hot body contest at Fusion Ultra Lounge, four days after Kaylee disappeared. People who saw her during this time would later say that she appeared happy, upbeat, and generally in a pleasant mood. Casey would go on to tell law enforcement that she went to Fusion Ultra Lounge to search for information on Zenaida's whereabouts, but she did not report Kaylee missing to anyone during this time and began to tell her parents, her boyfriend and friends, that Kaylee was with a babysitter that was later confirmed to have never existed. We will now review the conversations that Casey Anthony had with her family following her arrest. And in this initial call, we will hear Casey speaking with her mother, her brother, and her best friend, Christina. Let's begin. Casey? Mom. Hey, sweetie. Oh, well, I just saw your nice little cameo on TV. Which one? What do you mean, which one? Which one? I did four different ones, and I don't know. I haven't seen them all. I've only seen one or two so far. You don't know what my involvement is and stuff? Casey. Mom. What? No. I don't know what your involvement is, sweetheart. You, you're not telling me where she's at. Because I don't f***ing know where she's at. Are you kidding me? Casey Anthony has just been arrested in connection with the disappearance of her daughter, Kaylee Anthony, who has been missing for over a month. What we are listening to is the behavior of an adult who has likely been acting out in this manner the entirety of her natural life. She is abusive, rude, and rejects any notion that she bears responsibility of any kind in the disappearance of Kaylee, despite the fact that she's her mother. Now, this short five-minute call captures the dysfunctional dynamic of a child who does not respect her parent, and a parent who is unwilling to hold that child to any semblance of accountability. Cindy will continue to make excuses and sound apologetic for what is completely reasonable actions in wanting to garner information to find her granddaughter. But Casey's clear disinterest in assisting her family or law enforcement is only the beginning of why she would eventually earn the title of the most hated mother in America. Casey, don't waste your call. No, Scream and holler at waste me. my call sitting in, oh, the, the jail? Whose in, fault is, bunks are? Whose fault is you sitting in the jail? You're blaming me that you're sitting in the jail? Not Blame yourself fault. for telling lies. You mean it's not your fault? What do you mean it's not your fault, sweetheart? If you'd have told them the truth and not lied about everything, they wouldn't... Do me a favor, just tell me what Tony's number is. I don't want to talk to you right now. Forget it. I don't have his number. Um... Cindy Anthony was just attempting and failing to try and explain to Casey the severity of the situation. Casey's response only continues to solidify the claims of her reckless disregard for the life of her child. The idea of accountability seems truly foreign and uncomfortable to Casey, but try to imagine how you would react in this same situation. You've just been arrested for the disappearance of your child that you failed to report for over a month, then you lied to the police about every aspect of that disappearance, and now your parent is admonishing you to try and encourage any notion of personal responsibility. How would you respond in this situation? I mean, I know the answer is obvious, but it's important to remember how normal people respond in these situations. Because Casey's response is just one of the many reasons why so many people still believe her guilt to be indisputable because of her consistent failure to show any concern about the central reason she's now in jail, her daughter, Kaylee Anthony. We'll get it from Lee because I know Lee's at the house. I saw Mallory's car was out front. It was just on the news. They were just live outside the house. I know they were. Well? Well? Can you get Tony's number for me so I can call him? Hey. Hey, can you give me Tony's number? I... <laughs> I can do that. I don't know what real good it's going to do at this point. Well, I'd like to talk to him anyway. Okay. Because I called to talk to my mother, and it, it, it's f***ing waste. Oh, by the way, I don't want any of you coming up here when I have my my first hearing for Bond and everything else. Like, don't even waste your time coming up here. You know, you're having a real tough... You're making it real tough for anybody to want to try to even assist you with giving you See, somebody's phone number. You're not even letting me finish. Well, like, well, I because... really... The family of Casey Anthony are angry and shocked by Casey's behavior in these initial moments. Now, eventually that would change and credible allegations of perjury would be leveled against Cindy Anthony 
in what was later seen as clear attempts to lie for her daughter. But at this point in time, her family remains deeply suspicious of her behavior and they want answers. However, from the moment that Casey begins to speak with her brother, she doesn't attempt to offer any explanation or an apology for the invasion of the media into her family's life or even try to offer a reasonable justification for why she's in this predicament in the first place. She is more concerned about smoothing things over with her boyfriend than literally anything else, which when analyzed is just one more example of narcissistic and sociopathic behavior. Ms. Scott. You're asking me, first you're asking me for Tony's phone number so you can call him, and then you immediately want to start pressing towards me and saying, don't even worry about coming up here for all this stuff and trying to cut us out. I'm what? not trying to cut anybody out. I'm not going around and around with you, you know, this, that's pretty pointless. Uh, I'm not going to go through, I'm not going to put everybody else through the same stuff that you've been putting the police and everybody else through for the last 24 hours and the stuff you've been putting mom through for the last four or five weeks. I'm done with that. So you can tell me what's going on. Christina would love to talk to you because she thinks that you will tell her what's going on. Frankly, we're going to find out. Something, whatever's going on, is going to be found out. So why not do it now? Save There's yourself nothing to find out. There's absolutely nothing to find out. Not even what I told the detective. Well, you know, everything is no telling them to If I knew where Kaylee was, do you think any of this would be happening? No. Anyway, you only got a couple minutes for this, so I'm not going to let you through the way. So here's Christina. She thinks she can get through. No, no. I want Tony's number. I'm not talking to anybody else. Huh? Hi. I'm glad everybody's at my house. I'll have to call you later. I'll have to call somebody to get your number. Do me a favor. Get my brother back because I need Tony's number. Okay. Um... Is there anything I can do for you? I'm sitting in jail. There's nothing anybody can do right now. Well, I'm just trying to be... Oh, I know you are, honey. I, I absolutely know that you are, and I appreciate everything that you're trying to do, but I, I'd like to call Tony. He's not at my house, is he? No, okay. no. It's just me and your parents and Lee. Okay. Well, can you do me a favor and get my brother back or get the number from him, please? Um... The longer this goes on, the harder it is to comprehend. No, this is Casey's first interaction with her family and close friends after her arrest. They are rightfully worried because they have an entire army of news stations sitting outside of their house and they have no clue what's actually going on. They want answers. Anyone in their position would. And Casey's only concern is speaking with her boyfriend and angrily attacking her own family and best friend for trying to obtain the truth. And based on recent news, her entire reasoning for why she acted this way was because of her evil father who was secretly pulling the strings, forcing her to act like a child who was never told no. And if you believe that, please get in touch with me because I have some oceanfront property in Arizona I want to sell you. Do, does Tony have anything to do with Kaylee? No, nothing. Okay, so why do you want to talk to Tony? You, I, you, don't want to, you probably don't want to tell me, do you? Huh? You probably don't want to tell me, do you? What do you... Well, I didn't hear what you said. I said, does Tony have anything to do with Kaylee? No, Tony has nothing to do with Kaylee. Oh, uh, so I, wh why do you want to talk to him? Because you probably don't want to tell me. he's my boyfriend, and I want to actually try to sit and talk to him because I didn't get a chance to talk to him earlier because I got arrested on <laughs> whim today because they're blaming me for stuff that I never would do, that I didn't do. Okay. Well, I'm on nobody. I'm on your side. You know that. Oh, right? honey, I know that. I just want to talk to Tony and get a little bit of. Wait. Casey, uh, you have to tell me if you know anything about Kaylee. Sweetheart, if anything if I... happens with Kaylee and Casey, I'll die. You understand? I'll die. If anything Hello. happens to that baby. Oh, my God. Calling you guys? A waste. Huge waste. To me, this moment is one of the most damning things I've heard from Casey Anthony. It's not foundational evidence that would be the sole basis for a conviction in a court proceeding, but to me, it's something far worse. Christina is Casey's best friend, and she's heartbroken at the idea that something awful has happened to Kaylee. Normally, any mother in this situation would be horrified at the loss of their child, panicked, over where she was, desperate to bring her back, and would likely emulate the response from Christina with tears of her own, but not so with Casey. Her childish and petulant response to her best friend shows more than just her psychological disposition. It shows her character, 
who she really is when all the niceties and charms of life are stripped away. And that, for me, says everything I need to know about Casey Anthony. Honey, I love you. You know I would not let anything happen to my daughter. If I knew where she was, this wouldn't be going on. Well, how come everybody's saying you're lying? Because nobody listening to anything that I'm saying. The media completely misconstrued everything that I said. Detectives told them they got all of their information from me, yet at the same time, they're twisting stuff. They're, they've already said they're going to pin this on me if they don't find Kaylee. They've already said that. Well, uh, they you, arrested me because they said that... Yeah, because they said that the person that you dropped Kaylee with doesn't even exist. Because, oh, look, they can't find her in the Florida database. She's not just from Florida. If they would actually listen to anything that I would have said to them, they would have had their lead. They maybe could have tracked her down. They haven't listened to her. That I've said. Do you know that that whoever has Kaylee, nobody's going to get away with this? Nobody. I know nobody's going to get away with it, but at the same time, the only way they're going to find Kaylee is if they actually listen to what I'm saying, and I'm trying to help them, and they're not letting me help them. Listen to this fervor and vitriol with which Casey makes up her lies. She is viciously gaslighting her best friend in an attempt to guilt her into submission and somehow compel her and Casey's family to toe the line and repeat whatever Casey expects them to say. And in the years since the trial, Casey's own defense counsel, attorney Baez, has made claims concerning Casey, stating that she had serious mental health problems. Now, while I find Baez's behavior reprehensible and a serious ethical problem for any practicing attorney, the fact that he would publicly state these things about his own former client is in and of itself more revealing than most people realize. Because he arguably has more personal insight into Casey Anthony than even her own family. And by the end of this episode, I will share with you information that has arisen since the trial that describes a salacious relationship between Casey Anthony and her attorney. So how can I help them find her? The best thing you can do, baby, is listen They need to look up her information in a New York database, in a North Carolina database, other places that she's lived outside of Florida. That's what I told them even again today. I told them that four times today. I sat up at the police station, up at the county police station. For but she's hours. the one who has Kaylee, or she transferred Kaylee to somebody else? Because Honey, her I haven't talked to her. I don't know. I haven't talked to her. How come everybody's saying that you're not upset, that you're not crying, that you show no caring of where Kaylee because is at I'm all? Because I'm not sitting crying every two seconds because I have to stay composed to talk to detectives, to make other phone calls, to do other things. I can't sit here and be crying every two seconds like I want to. I can't. Now, I have a very simple question that I want you to answer in the comments. Now, you can wait to answer until the end of the video so you can make your own fully informed response, but I want to know what you think. Is this the behavior of someone who recently lost their child due to a tragic accident, or does it more accurately look like the behavior of someone who's determined to hide the truth? Now, in the future, I'm going to pick someone's response and answer it in an upcoming video, so be prepared to defend your answer. Let's continue. Okay. Casey, don't yell at me. I'm, I'm on your side. I'm I on your side. You're not, Trust me. I know you're on my side. I'm not trying Nobody to Nobody is you. saying anything bad about you. Your family is with you 100%. No, they're not. Yes. Because I just watched news and heard everything that my mom said. Nobody in my own family is on my side. Yes, they are. Nobody has said... They just want Kaylee back. That's all they're worried about right now is getting Kaylee back. This is another moment that is virtually impossible to comprehend as a parent. She tells her best friend just how frustrated she is that everyone's concern is with Kaylee and that she's entirely on the back burner. She is quite literally expressing jealousy over her missing daughter. But just for a moment, let's take Casey at her word. Her evil and deranged father, who did unspeakable things to her as a child, the same monstrous man who refused to call 911 to help Kaylee, forced Casey into silence, and now she's taking the fall for a crime she didn't commit. Her father, a former police officer with extensive knowledge in the processes and procedures of criminal investigations, chose to put a bag over the head of his granddaughter, 
didn't even bother to dig a hole and dumped Kaylee in an open field right by their home to rot. The same man who would react this way in an interview after the trial when discussing his granddaughter, Kaylee Anthony. She called me Jojo. Something I miss to this day. Jojo loves you, Jojo. See you later. And she just blew me a kiss and I blew her one back. You know, I never saw her after that. And that's something that I miss. I, I miss her. It doesn't require a master's degree in common sense to see the difference in authenticity and in the reactions of two people to see with clarity who sounds truthful and who doesn't. You know what? That's all I care about right now. Casey, but your daughter, your, your flesh and blood, your baby girl. Christina, please, put my brother back on the phone. I don't want to get into this with you right now. I love you, honey, and I'm glad that you're there. Thank you for your help. I will let you know if there's anything that you can do. You can't tell me anybody that can find Kaylee. Nobody. No, because every number that I've tried, every number that I've called is disconnected. Nothing. I can't get a hold of anybody. But that, that girl was the last person to have her? She was the last person to have her. That was the last time I saw Kaylee. Okay. Um, he doesn't, Lee said he doesn't have Tony's phone yes, number. Yes, he does. He has Tony's phone number in his phone. He needs a f***ing line. He just told me a second ago that he'd give me the number. So if I go and I get you Tony's number, are you going to finish talking to me? I, I will call you tomorrow. I want to talk to him really quick now. I don't want to actually try to close my eyes. I haven't slept in four days. I have not slept in four days. Listen, if you're going to talk to anybody, you can talk to me. And I you know, know that. I can talk to you. But at the same time, I know I can talk to Tony, and that's who I want to talk to right now. I haven't gotten a chance to talk to him since this morning. Since all this stuff happened with trying to set up the MySpace, I made the MySpace. And the Do you know the password to that MySpace? I made all of it. What's the password to that MySpace so we can see if anybody's wrote in any leads of where Kaylee might be? A very common trope in the true crime genre is that observing an offender's reaction is a sufficient singular data point in determining someone's guilt or innocence. In my experience, while the subject's reaction, body language, and mannerisms can over time help to point to their possible involvement, that alone is not a reliable means in determining possible criminality. Now, in the matter of Casey Anthony, she has spent the better part of this call childishly demanding to speak to her boyfriend while simultaneously demonstrating no emotion for Kaylee. Throughout the entirety of this case, she consistently fails to demonstrate the behavior of a mother whose primary concern was her child. And when you take this case in its totality, it begins to shed light on something Casey still refuses to see. That her behavior was cold and calculated and appeared to have all of the hallmarks of guilt and no amount of shifting blame and nothing she says can change how she acted, what she did, or ever bring back her daughter, Kaylee Anthony. You can go online and see it. As far as messages, I don't know if anybody's gonna be messaging stuff. The password Okay, um, Tony's number? Yeah. You ready? Um Okay, thank you. I will find a way to call you back later. Leave your number at my house with my mom so I can get it and I can either call you later tonight. How can I get a hold of you? Um, I'm at the jail. You can't. Okay, can you, do you have a way to write my phone number down? No, I have no way of writing it down. I have to remember Tony's <laughs> to try to memorize his number right now. Okay. Um, so, no, I will just leave your number with my mom and I will try to call you in the morning if I don't get a chance to call you tonight. So, how can I find out information about that, though? Have, them, Florida, have them look up a New York license for Zenaida Fernandez hyphen Gonzalez. They've just been looking up the last name Gonzalez or the last name Fernandez. If they looked up her entire name, they might actually find her. They haven't done that. They haven't listened to anything that I've said. How do you spell Zenaida? Z E N mm -hmm. A I A I D A. Z E N A I D A. Fernandez hyphen Gonzalez. Hyphen Gonzalez. Where does she live? Because they went and looked at her place. Or Baby, you're not telling me anything that I don't already know. Again, I've only been in jail since, oh, about 8.30 tonight. During the trial of Casey Anthony, one of her former friends testified about Casey's behavior following the events of June 16th, 2008. Casey's friend testified that on a night they had gone out drinking, Casey had taken a phone call from one of her close friends, 
And in the call, Casey was heard making statements that she knew were complete lies. And sure enough, once Casey ended the call, she proudly proclaimed how good she was at lying to and deceiving her friends. And it's precisely because of Casey's long history of pathological lying that I believe her upcoming documentary series will only reignite the anger and hostility people already have towards her. Earlier today, a longer version of the trailer was released, and sure enough, Casey is no longer throwing her dad under a bus. She's throwing him into the wood chipper. And it's for that reason that I will continue to advocate for the memory of Kaylee Anthony, because God knows Casey won't. I was with them all day today. I know that. I was with officers pretty much since 9 o'clock last night, up until today. Like, up until this evening when I came up here. But you're telling the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Because they'll find... I have no clue where my daughter is. Yeah, that is the truth. That is the absolute truth. They'll find out, and whoever... Okay, Christina, I'm hanging up. I need to make this other call before I forget the number, so I will call you later. Okay, bye. Good morning, beautiful. I love you. Hi, I love you too. Why is she crying already? (laughs) Because we haven't seen you. I know. Hey, hold on one second. Miss Baker. Oh, where'd she go? I'm going to try to get them to turn this up a little bit, but go ahead. So how's, so how's your day starting out so far? I was asleep. <laughs> well? So it's all right. I woke up at 5, stayed up for about an hour, and then went back to bed for a little bit. So my eyes are red. I'm tired. So what else is going on with you? Nothing. (laughs) The usual. Um, These initial moments with the Anthony family are important because they will serve as a contrast to how quickly this conversation is about to devolve. Following this conversation, Casey would later write to a fellow inmate discussing her explosive hatred of her mother, even going so far as to say that her only concern was Kaylee. And in a later conversation with the family's personal investigator, Casey would also discuss her anger towards her father for testifying against her at the grand jury. And it was at that time that she decided that she would claim he was responsible, not because it was the truth, but because she wanted vengeance. I guess waiting around. Those are new shirts. I like those. Yes, those are the Never Lose Hope Foundation did these for us, so... I like those a lot. Those are really nice. Yeah, those are really sweet. Really, really sweet. Can, I, you, read what it's, can you read what they say? Um, fly home, baby, and I don't see the bottom. Fly. This is fly home, baby. We miss you. Those are nice shirts. I like those. Yeah. Well, let me have you speak to Mom, okay? Now she's right here. She's pulling at the phone. Hold on. All right. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Oh, well, I lasted a minute. <laughs> How are you feeling? Not. We're not doing well, Kate. None of us. Lee's been sick. Dad's. Dad's blown up at the media. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> Someone just said that Kaylee was dead this morning, that she drowned in the pool. That's the newest story out there. Surprise, surprise. Much has been said about Casey's response to the allegation of Kaylee's drowning. Her behavior is not congruent with that of a loving and caring mother. Even a false assertion of hearing how your own child could have been harmed would typically generate some emotional response. And this is precisely why claims of narcissism, Sociopathy, even psychopathy, have been leveled against her. One thing Casey Anthony fails to understand is that absent of telling the American people and the world the unfiltered truth about her involvement in Kaylee's death, the vast majority of people will never change their minds. These moments don't gain the benefit of hindsight because Casey wants a more public life. And if you want evidence of just how long people will hold a grudge for a travesty of justice of this magnitude, one only needs to consult with O.J. Simpson. It's very hard. Well, yeah, I... 
trust me, I know that. Someone just sent me some of the, the stuff that's been online, um, comments that people have been leaving off of certain um, articles, I guess, that have been written, and it, it was very upsetting last night to see that. Oh, yes, but, you know, it's, it's terrible, Casey. Get hate mail, threatening letters. Well, I haven't gotten oh, anything messages. like that, thankfully. All of the letters that I've gotten have been positive. Even the letter that she had attached was still very positive. Everyone's certain that she's okay. This is the part of the true crime world that sometimes leaves me feeling hopeless and heartbroken. This woman has credibly been accused of taking the life of her child, covering up the evidence of her crime, and is now facing the only accountability she will ever know from the justice system. But apparently, while all this was going on, she was getting massive amounts of fan mail every single day. While Kaylee's remains lie in a field down the street from her house, Casey is enjoying the widespread attention and support that is raining down on her in her jail cell. Including men from all over the world sending pictures and asking for her hand in marriage. I want to end this segment with a witty remark, but all I have right now is disgust. Offering help. A couple people have said that they've called and talked to dad or have left him messages. So we need to we need to have something to go on. Mom, I don't have anything. I'm sorry. I've been here a month. I've been here a month today. Do you understand how I feel? I mean, do you really understand how I feel in this? I'm completely, completely out of the loop with everything. The only information I get is when I see my attorney. That's it. Yeah, Outside of that, I have nothing to go on. Every day I have to sit here and wait and wonder. I wonder if something's going on. Wonder if, I'm wondering if there's something new. Yeah. Did Jose <laughs> ask you about which one of us you'd want to meet with? Yeah, I wanted to see Dad. I mean, I want to see everybody, but I had to choose, and I wanted to see Dad. Now, as of recording this episode, which will be the day of its release, George Anthony has never been charged with any crime in the connection of Kaylee Anthony. Now, investigators looked into his possible involvement and never once considered filing any charges. Simply put, there was no evidence that linked him in any way. Now, according to Casey's new docuseries, she's alleging that she was manipulated into a dysfunctional relationship with her father, but really listen to how she just spoke about wanting to see her dad. Did you notice anything? Did you hear how authentic and honest her statements sound? That's because they are, and no matter what new version of the facts she's trying to peddle, she can't hide from the truth laid out in plain sight for all the world to see. Then here, talk to your dad. Hey, sweetheart. Hey. Hey, listen, I want you to know, you are the boss through this whole thing, okay? Well, no, I'm not anymore, Dad. I haven't been since I got oh, here. Yes. Oh, oh, yes, you are. You you, you are the... Th think of this for a second. <laughs> dad, you, you, I've you, been... Listen, listen, okay, oh, listen no, I've no, been just thinking listen to me about just for this. one moment. Okay, just listen to me for one second, okay? Listen, to think of you, you owning this conglomerate, this huge business. Jose is one of your employees, so is the Sheriff's Department, so is the FBI, so am I, so is Lee, so is Mom. You know, we're all, we're all working with you. And if for some reason something's not being said or being done, you can make a change. You're the one that Dad, can say, listen. I've please, told please. Jose, no, I've given him the information to give you guys. We've given the information. You guys have given everything to the police. They're not helping us. It's obvious. We know their intentions. So I'm sorry. I've helped in every way that I possibly can since the day I got here. Yeah, no, you didn't. And listen, I want to address the ridiculous statements Casey just made. But what's come out in the last 24 hours is even more important. In the upcoming Peacock documentary series, the director of the doc has stated that what they uncover in the three-part series will change the way the American people look at this case. And already in the extended trailer, friends of Casey Anthony can be heard extolling her virtues as a mother, making definitive statements about her love for Kaylee, 
and it's clearly an attempt at rewriting Casey's past and changing the narrative that Casey was actually the perfect mom all along. She intends to change our minds by saying that all of this behavior we are now watching was actually just a trauma response to her father's evil and criminal behavior. But I'm betting you're smarter than that. That like me, you see what we are watching right now with clarity and that you understand that trauma is not an excuse for desecrating the life and memory of your child. But to be clear, in case it isn't yet, Casey, we will never forget what you did or what we believe you got away with, and telling more lies while refusing to acknowledge the truth will do nothing to change that. Okay, they well, didn't even give me 24 hours to help them, the police, without putting me here. So it's obvious where everybody's intentions lie. I know you guys want Kaylee. I want Kaylee more than, than anybody can understand, but I can't do anything. I can't do anything from where I'm at. Okay, let me ask you this. If, if I can make some arrangements just to meet with you just one-on-one, -on -one, just you and I, or, or Lee or Mom, would you be open to that? Because I can do it with, within a matter of just a few hours. Dad, this was already discussed, and I already said yes. Okay. This is, was something that we had already discussed. Supposedly it was supposed to have already happened. Well, there's been some... I understand. There's to change that. There's nothing been on my part to change that, or mom's part, or, or your brother's part. Believe. No, I understand that. It's not I you mean, guys. I told I've... these guys. I told these guys within an hour I can be ready. I want to hug you. I want to talk Look, to you. They're... Just, just, just you and I. You know. Jose is making sure that I'm well aware of everything that's going on. He's keeping me completely updated on stuff, which I, in every way, appreciate okay. because okay. I just, again, I just want you... that's all I, I, I have to something. go off of with stuff. I want you to realize something. No, number one, or at least number 1.1 1 .1 and number one should, should be you and Kaylee. That's the way it should be. It shouldn't be well, it's Jose, split, then Dad. you, then Kaylee, and you know, everything else is falling in line. It, it's, it, it's, you know, it has to, be, has to be you two, you know, you and your daughter. The, it's got to be the ones that's got to be focused on here. Well, he's focusing on Kaylee and I. You guys are focusing on Kaylee. I know I'm still part of your focus, but she's your main focus, and I understand that. In the years since the trial, a former personal investigator for the Anthony family has issued an affidavit in connection with the Casey Anthony bankruptcy. And if you haven't seen it and you have interest in this case, I would highly recommend taking a look. What Dominic Casey, the former personal investigator for the Anthony family, alleges in the affidavit is that Casey Anthony was in an inappropriate sexual relationship with her defense attorney, Jose Baez, and that she admitted to her attorney that she did in fact murder Kaylee and gave instructions on where to find her remains. Additionally, Dominic would allege that Casey Anthony had committed this heinous act out of spite towards her mother because of her jealousy and anger that they shared a bond that she truly hated. Now, it's important to remember that this was someone who worked for the Anthony family, not someone with a vendetta from the prosecution. And after reading it myself, it helped to explain all of the missing pieces of the puzzle many of us had long since suspected. Dad, I know where everybody's priorities lie. I knew that the day that I got here. Well, you know, just I bring up, then, then again, I want to bring up this thing about about, you know, you being the boss, you're, you're, you're the one that can control everything. You're the one no, that can control everything. No, I, Dad, decision. please. I'm, okay, I'm sweetie, completely. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to get you upset. I'm trying no, to. No, but to I am upset now. I'm please. completely upset. One, the media is going to have a freaking field day with this. No, no, I wasn't even. Gonna, I wasn't listen, even supposed to take this. L listen, let me they're, speak they're, for they're, a second. Dad, I let everybody it, talk. Okay. They're not releasing it. Well, I hope not. I'll keep okay. saying whatever I have to about the police okay, here, so mom. they Hold don't let it go. Can someone let me... Come on! Dear God. Okay, let's revisit where we are at this point in time. Right now, Kaylee is missing, and the general public has no idea where she is or how to find her. In the entirety of these videos, you will not see a single moment where Casey is asking about the current efforts to locate her only child. 
A few years ago, Casey had mentioned to the Associated Press concerning the occurrences surrounding Kaylee's death that she didn't know much about what happened at that time, that she merely did what she was told, but that she believed everything would be okay, and at this very moment, while she's sitting talking to her parents in jail, she thought Kaylee was still alive. So according to her, even she didn't know where Kaylee was at this moment in time. So if finding Kaylee could exonerate and free her, proving that she was the victim and not the perpetrator, then why in the world would she not advise law enforcement of what actually happened? That her father was the perpetrator, rather than take the fall for him and risk a jury trial that included the death penalty. But I guess when you look at the facts as they actually exist, her lies only serve to reveal the truth. Casey. Hold on, sweetheart. Settle down, baby. Nobody's letting me speak. You want me to talk? Then All right, give me I'll listen three to seconds to see Go, something. Sweetheart. I'm not in control over any of this because I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know what's going on. My entire life has been taken from me. Everything has been taken from me. You don't understand. Everybody wants me to have answers. I don't have any answers because I don't know what's going on. I have no one to talk to. And everything's been taken from you because of your actions. But you know what this reminds me of, this moment right here? This reminds me of the kind of tantrum that you see in a store when a parent has no control over their child and the parent just stands there allowing their kid to run the show. Well, eventually that child grows up. And if something drastic isn't done along the way, what comes of it looks and sounds exactly like this. At one point in the trial, Cindy Anthony would tell a story that contradicted the evidence and many agreed was a clear case of perjury. The state attorney's office would decline to pursue charges, but the fact remained that Cindy Anthony's testimony during trial could not have been true. And rest assured, we will discuss that at length in a future episode. But the issue still remains. The repeated attempts by Cindy Anthony to cover for her child may have helped ensure her exoneration, something that Cindy had been accused of before, helping her child avoid responsibility at every significant learning moment throughout the entirety of Casey's life. Since Jose, when he comes, it's the only person that I can talk to right now because I can't even say anything to you guys besides telling you that I love you. I want Kaylee, things like that. And that's not even getting put on the air, which it should be. It's everything else, everything that I'm I'm not saying. That's why I haven't been calling. That's why I haven't been taking calls because him and I said that we weren't going to do that because I'm trying to make sure that I'm not (laughs) going to give anybody anything else to throw against me. Even with me giving them nothing, they're still doing it. So... Well, everything's How gonna go I... away with you. You'll be fine once Kaylee's found. That's... Mom, I understand that. Did you hear what Cindy just said? Even her mother understands the importance of finding Kaylee. Because even if you were to use any version of Casey's story, finding Kaylee could have only helped her situation since she claims she had absolutely nothing to do with it. Well, then the evidence would have supported that. Additionally, her attorney had an ethical responsibility to at least discuss the possibility of speaking to law enforcement or the prosecutor to report a dangerous former cop who had masterminded an atrocious crime against a child and then forced Casey into a felonious cover-up. If that was going to be their story at trial anyway, then why wouldn't they want to protect the general public from a man who was capable of such monstrous things to a child, accident or not? Wait, this is starting to get really confusing and convoluted. It's almost like none of this makes any sense when you really think about it. I mean, unless, of course, it was just another convenient lie. Do you understand my position on this? You guys expect me to have a thousand answers, and I have nothing. I've been here a month out of contact with everybody except you guys on the rare occasion that I get to see you and my attorney. Do you you understand? What am I supposed to learn from that? What am I supposed to learn from that the first week and a half? Yeah. I try to help you guys backtrack. Again, that's all I could do was backtrack. I can't backtrack on anything. 
a month I've been removed from the situation. You don't, you guys are not understanding my side on this, and I'm sorry. No, I understand. Uh, no, you don't, because you're still asking me if there's anything that I can tell you that's going to help. That I'm the one that can do this. I can't. The opportunity was there that I probably could have helped. I'm trying. I was trying. There's, there's nothing more that I can say or do until I'm home. And even then, I don't know what I can do from that point, but I can at least do something other than sit on my butt all day and, and read. The Anthonys had the incredible misfortune of having their deeply dysfunctional family put on display for the American people and the world. And normally, we could all agree that no family is perfect, but this is something very different. Casey is an adult, an adult throwing a tantrum when all her parents are trying to do is locate Kaylee. Casey has barely spoken a word to them since her arrest. She's lied constantly about absolutely everything, and she refuses to show even a minuscule amount of class or respect, let alone demonstrate any authentic concern for why she's there in the first place, her missing daughter. Sadly, this is likely something Casey has been doing since early adolescence, because a mom willing to lie under oath was sadly likely a mother who has been lying for long before that. It doesn't excuse Casey or her behavior. It just helps to explain it. That has to be my focus because no, it's the focus only thing that I can't be focused on. Kaylee. Mom, if that's my focus, which it is, I can't do anything from here. I don't have access to the internet. I can't make phone calls. Well, I can't can go I anywhere. Do? I've already told you, Mom. I've told you everything I've you thought can about do. everything that you told me well, over the last you've month. thought about stuff and you've done what you can i'm sorry that's all i can do from the only knowledge that i have i was in lake county two days ago okay is there anything there mom Jesus. cindy anthony is desperate to find the smallest clue or detail that can help them find kaylee and everyone who saw kaylee with george and cindy knew just how much they loved and adored her. In early June of that year, Cindy Anthony would speak with her mother, Casey's grandmother, and explain to her that she intended to take full custody of Kaylee. Casey's grandmother would later state that Casey had stolen $45,000 from her parents, also illegally taking out credit cards in her mother's name, including stealing money from her as well. The hostility Casey is aiming at her mother is palpable and evident in every second of these jailhouse videos. She has no patience for her mother, gets angry any time she talks about Kaylee, and angrily responds to every question. Casey's grandmother would end her statement by saying, I just wonder if she hated her mom more than she loved Kaylee. And in the years since the trial, Others have come out to make allegations that Casey Anthony was jealous of Kaylee's relationship with Cindy and knew of her mother's motivation to take Kaylee away from her. Sadly, Casey's ardent defenders have claimed in the years since the trial that a clear motive was never evident. But the more you learn about the actual facts of this case, the more you realize that motives were in plentiful supply. I'm sorry. I love you guys. I miss All you. Right, sweetheart. Here's Dad. Hold on. No, I'm, I'm going to hang up and just walk away no, right now because... Please, don't. Please I'm frustrated don't. and I'm angry and I don't want to be angry. This is the first time I've truly, truly been angry this entire time. But I'm so beyond frustrated with, with all of this that I can't even swallow right now. It hurts. You just understand we're all going in so many different directions. We just want to go in the right one. Well, I can't point you in that direction when I'm literally at a standstill. Okay. I am just as removed from the situation as somebody who has no clue what's going on, at least even random people that we've never met have more of an outlook on this than I do right now. It's really sad. It's really, really sad that I literally have nothing right now. Well, Nothing. You're, none of us have anything right now, Casey. Hey, you guys have each other. You're sitting next to Dad. You still have Lee. You have access to our community, to our, our family and friends, to our house. 
<laughs> you're taking for granted the fact that I have no one to comfort me. She has no one to comfort her. Casey Anthony has wreaked devastation in the lives of her family, ripping a Kaylee-sized hole through them that has unleashed tsunamis of pain on the one group of people who wanted to save her life from death row, and all she cares about is herself. And what's worse is Casey profited from the death of her own child by licensing pictures of Kaylee to ABC News for $200,000. So regardless of whatever claims she wants to make now, it doesn't change this classless and puerile behavior that she has continued to demonstrate from then until now. Because we saw the video where Casey Anthony called the cops in 2021 while she was at a bar, which is funny because she could call the cops for someone throwing a drink in her face, but not for her own child. So the only thing she could say that would even remotely matter is to admit to the actual truth and avoid anything that looks like an attempt at trying to elicit sympathy, which we all now know won't happen. But even if it did, it will do nothing to bring back Kaylee. And if she truly wanted to do the right thing, she would just issue a statement telling the truth and then just go away. But myself and the occasional visit, which has to be business, for the sake of finding Kaylee. So yeah, it, I may look like I'm in charge. Wrong. I'm completely pushed away from everything. No. All everything. he's telling so, you is that you can tell they have to honor your wishes when you say something. That's all Dad's trying to tell you. Jose has to honor And he wishes. has been, Mom. Okay. He has been with everything. Everything. Well, you know he's in New York now for a couple days. He's doing stuff for business for me. I know. I know. Well, Mom, I, you're not telling me anything that I don't know. Please. Well, I'm, I don't want to get frustrated or upset with you, but... Well, I just, in his absence, um, Dominic's a good person if you want to talk to anybody. Mom, I've all... <sighs> Thank you. I've already talked to everybody. I know who I'm allowed to talk to, who I'm not allowed to talk to, who I can see, who I can't see, who's going to see me, who's not going to see me. I okay. we've arranged all of this. It's okay. already been set up. Again, he's the one person that's keeping me in the loop because he's the only person that can. And he's making sure that he's doing that in every way possible. Well, I just hope he's telling you honestly what you're up against. Mom, I know what I'm honestly up against. Do you guys understand what I'm honestly up against? And with yes. keeping me here, you're not helping me help myself. Well, I'm sorry safe. to say that. Huh? Safe, honey. We don't have the means to get you out anyway, sweetheart. We don't. I understand that, but the opportunity was there, and it wasn't taken advantage of. And We didn't um, have an opportunity. I don't know where you're hearing this. Just give Dad the phone, please. I'm sorry. I don't want to get frustrated. Just give Dad the phone. Okay, let's review for a moment. Casey's bail has been set at $500,000, and she's been in jail for about a month. Now, without an apology for the hellscape that she's turned her family's life into, she instead opts to complain that her parents are choosing to keep her in jail and refusing to help her? She would even imply in another conversation that the money that had been raised to help find Kaylee should have instead been used for her bail. The Anthony family was not independently wealthy, and posting a bond of that magnitude was an incredible financial burden on them, a burden that Casey seemed to expect that they would just figure out. There is a reoccurring theme in all of these interactions, a child who very obviously was used to getting her way, someone who ran the show in that household, and even with the overwhelming evidence stacked against her, refuses to show any grace or kindness to her parents, the same people she will eventually throw under the bus to save her life. Now, while I have my own clear opinions of the evidence, I have spent hundreds of hours researching every single shred of media, court records, pleadings, public statements that I could find on this case, and I have yet to find a single solitary strand of evidence that supports any of Casey's claims of innocence. In my opinion, this was never a circumstantial case. 
It was a case that required a diligent and detailed view of the facts. Sometimes the only way to answer a complex question is with a complex answer, especially when the facts point to a clear and concerted effort to deny justice for Kaylee Marie Anthony. Hey, sweetie. This is seriously the first time that I've been angry, that I've been this frustrated to where I, <laughs> I can't even think straight at this moment. Throughout this entire thing, I was pissed off that day at the police station. I was mad when all of that happened, but I tried to look at things objectively. And this entire time, I haven't sat in my room for the entire month and been mad. Not once. Not one time. But right now, this is the most agitated and frustrated that I've been, even when I've sat with Jose and I watched that episode of, of Nancy Grace and the stuff that was being said about mom and being said about me and him and everybody else and the stuff that I've heard. It's frustrated me, but I've let it go. Right now, I'm so hurt by everything. I don't even know what to say. And, and I hate to say that. Well, I'm not. I'm not trying to upset you. Neither, neither am I. We're not trying to. And if we are, I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm sorry for that. When watching these videos, it's very easy to forget that Casey now claims that her father had been responsible for this crime all along, something that she intends to reiterate in her docu series in just a few weeks. Now, I've carefully watched George Anthony in every iteration of his public and private interviews, and I have yet to see any sign that he was anything other than a loving and caring parent and grandparent. But in the last several years, a story came out concerning George's interactions with his daughter, Casey, that told me more than either of their words could ever say. According to the bail bondsman that would post the bail for Casey Anthony to leave jail a few days after this video, he personally witnessed a violent altercation between Casey and her father. Allegedly, the bondsman walked in on George Anthony choking Casey, demanding answers about what happened to Kaylee. Casey's only response was to shout at her father to stop acting like a cop, and in my experience, Sometimes the truth becomes so painful that denial becomes no longer tenable and some people will do just about anything, even the wrong thing, to find answers. I know that's not your intention. You have to understand where I'm coming from in this and obviously none of you are. By still expecting me a month, literally out of the loop, to have some sort of new insight on stuff? I mean, really? <laughs> okay, I, I realize this is really hard for you to talk about, especially... Because you know, I can't anything. do anything. Because I've done everything. I've said everything. I've thought about everything. That's all I can do is sit and think. Every day. And that's what I've done. Any information that I've given has been passed on. I know that. You know, it's, it's, it's just hard, I know, for you. It's hard for us because none of us have ever been through any of this kind of stuff before. None of us, you know. Well, obviously I don't, I don't... not. <laughs> and we need to stick together in this, and it's hard for us, too, at this point. Well, we're, we are sticking together. We are. Well, you know? for Mom to say that you guys have nothing, what I told her, you guys still all have each other to lean on. I don't have anybody. I have yeah. myself in the the occasions that I can see my attorneys who are trying to do whatever they can for myself and for Kaylee. So you guys at least have a crutch or multiple crutches throughout the community with everybody. Well, even even that is waning at the moment, believe me. Even your mom and I are having our issues every single day, so just realize it's... It, it's Dad, it's I know really, it's going to really take really a toll on everybody, but understand again where I'm coming from in this. You have to see everybody's side. I've tried. To, I've looked at everybody's side about this. I've been praying every single day for insight and everybody's thoughts and everybody's feelings. So I know where you stand and where you're coming from. And I know where you're sitting right now. And Mom and Lee and Joe Schmo walking down the block that's seen this every day on the media for the last month. I can understand everybody else's side in this. But the worst part is, is that nobody can see my side. And I have to keep my mouth shut. Now, while Casey was busy keeping her mouth shut and feeling sorry for herself, 
at this very moment in time, she was also getting really close with her cellmate and now new friend, Robin Adams. In the years since the trial, Robin has produced evidence of the letters that she and Casey wrote back and forth while in jail during that time. And there were hundreds of pages of handwritten correspondence between the two. In late November of 2008, during the time Kaylee was still missing, news had broke that a bag of bones had been located at a nearby river, and early suspicions indicated that it could be the remains of Kaylee. Robin would share this information with Casey, who without skipping a beat, explained that whatever they found wasn't her daughter, and that police were looking in the wrong area. But a few weeks later, when news broke that Kaylee had been found, Casey would completely fall apart. Many who witnessed it said that she appeared nervous, terrified, and fearful. Robin would eventually speak with Casey about her daughter's recovery. And in Casey's explanation, she told Robin that Kaylee had been found wrapped in a Winnie the Pooh blanket, stuffed inside a black plastic bag. But there was just one very big problem with that. None of that information had ever been provided to the public, to Casey's family, her attorney, or any members of the media. Those details were only known by law enforcement and the person responsible for disposing the remains of Kaylee Anthony. Officers from the Orange County Sheriff's Department would go on to confirm these facts with Robin directly and would make a report of their findings. Eventually, Robin was added to the witness list during Casey's trial. However, the prosecution would never call her to the stand, and the jury would never hear that Casey had perfectly described evidence that directly implicated her with the crime scene. Evidence that someone innocent could not have possibly known. I have to keep my mouth shut about how I feel and with everything else because all I need to do is give the media more stuff for then the detectives and whoever else throw back in my face when this goes to trial. Well, all I know is I'm, I'm trying to do everything I can to get a chance to see you. You know, just, I know. just you and I. I mean, I'm, I'm trying and, and so was, you know, your, your brother and I know your mom would you know, like to do that. So I know that and... When I had that choice and they told me that they were initially setting it up with Lily, God, I would do anything to see any of you right now. Absolutely anything. But, I mean, I wanted to see Lee and I wanted to talk to Lee, but I knew most of that would be an interrogation with him. He'd have a whole list of questions that he'd ask me. With uh, Mom... Honestly, honest, honestly, no. Honestly, no. He, he really doesn't. Oh, well, that's how it's been, Dad. I'm just thinking of, of how it's been with everything. With Mom... A mom would dominate a lot of the conversation, which is how it's been. I mean, you and I, we've been separated for a while. And we were just... I want to see all of you, but I wanted to see the one person that I've been so far disconnected from the longest, and that's been you. I'm, I'm thankful for that. Thank you. It was hard for me to make my choice. I sat there for a half hour with Jose trying to think about this, and he told me it's up to me who I wanted to see, how I wanted to do this, how we wanted to figure it out, and it was hard. Because I don't want to have to choose between the three of you, you know, who I want to see or talk to, but I made a choice. And I stand behind that. This is one of the few times Casey expresses real emotion, and for her father, no less. You know, the man who disposed of her child haphazardly in some brush down the street from her house. A man that she is about to tell the world again in her documentary that he was the monster responsible for Kaylee's demise. And yet here she is, saying how much she wants to see her father, how much she misses him. And this is the one time we actually see Casey Anthony being really heartfelt and genuine. And that's because it is. All of these interactions reveal something that Casey Anthony can never and will never succeed at hiding, that she loved her father and that he cared for her. And that even though it was clearly dysfunctional, he loved Kaylee. And to this day, no evidence has ever come out linking him to this crime. But what has become very clear Casey Anthony is willing to say or do anything to deflect accountability or the truth. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm 
glad you made that choice, you know, on, on your own. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. I know I know it's a tough decision for you. I know that. Everything's a tough decision just because I'm so limited on the decisions that I can actually make now. I know. Well, let me see if I can handle it a different way to get in to see you even sooner. Would that be okay with you? Do what you have to do. I mean, I'm not obviously going anywhere right now, so I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm biding my time, so... Now, if you recall, at the beginning of this video, I asked you to be ready to make your own ruling in this case. And now, I would like to invite you to comment how you would cast your vote based on the information you now know. I'm looking forward to reading your comments. After spending hundreds of hours putting this series together, I began to realize that this case would need to share something in common with its predecessor. It would need to become a trilogy. Now, as many of you know, two weeks from now, Casey Anthony will begin telling her story, a version of events that she believes will absolve her of responsibility in the eyes of the American public and the world. But we will not forget what really happened in this travesty of justice, and the world will not forget that it was robbed of the opportunity to know this beautiful girl, Kaylee Anthony. And in episode three of this series, I will tell you my own story, the reason why this case means so much to me and why I will always advocate for victims, their families, and anyone who stands in the name of justice. Now in closing, I wanna thank you for taking the time to join me today and just taking a moment out of your day to be here. If you enjoyed today's content, please like, comment, and subscribe. Your interaction with this content is one of the most powerful things you can do to support us. It really does help this channel grow, and without you, none of this is possible. I also want to personally thank each of our incredible Patreon and YouTube supporters, as well as the BCM research team who helped with today's episode. Thank you all for being such an invaluable part of the BCM community. And if you would like to support the channel, please consider visiting our Patreon or support us right here on YouTube with the subscription options available on our channel. And stay tuned for a new series coming next week, as well as new episodes of the Jody Arias and the Casey Anthony series getting posted shortly thereafter. And to those who have been patiently waiting, Sarah Boone, Chris Watts, and Lori Vallow are coming this year. There is so much new content coming that I just can't wait to share with you. And again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for being here today. This has been Behind Criminal Minds. We'll see you next time.